Okay, so there's a bit of an issue that I want to get off my chest that I feel like that has been going on for an extremely long time since like the beginning of criticism for films because first and foremost, I believe it's absolute bullshit how some critics treat some films. Partially what inspired this video is the enormous hate and bad reviews towards Batman v Superman and how they're calling it one of the worst superhero movies ever made if not the worst ever made, which let me inform you on a little something. Have any of you seen 2004's Catwoman with Halle Berry or 2005's Electra? with Jennifer Garner, or the 1990 version of Captain America with... Uh whatever his name is, or even last year's Fantastic Four. Are you people saying that these are all better than Batman v Superman? Because look, what I also have to take into account, because film as a whole is extremely subjective over the internet, that everyone has their own likes and dislikes about anything and everything on this planet, because I'm gonna be real here. I have those same type of traits about myself when I look at Pepsi or something, a similarity to Coke, which has a lot more sugar than its predecessor, and I just think Coke is better. Same thing goes for film. Everybody has their tastes, likes, and dislikes about any film, whether it be a romantic drama, horror slasher film, action adventure film, and all these genres that make film for what it is and the overall beauty of it. And if you're like me, who doesn't care about the genre and only looks at the film and say, well, is it good or not? Then I feel like this video is for you, where I cover the problem with critics today. Now, the first reason as to why they aren't the most reliable is first and foremost, the hate surrounding Batman v Superman. On every single movie critic website, mainly the huge ones such as Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, and IMDb for example, which is like the go-to websites if you have any concerns about a movie or if you don't want to watch a movie review on YouTube because of idiots like this guy, as Batman v Superman stands, it currently has a whopping 29% on Rotten Tomatoes, a 44% on Metacritic, and a 9.4 out of 10 on IMDb. It's, it's a weird change change on these, but there's a bit of a mix of opinions on these. Which again, everybody's entitled to whatever the fuck they have to say about this film, but what I'm currently attacking on is some of the reasons as to why people hate this film, which is some of the regular critics and some of the top critics that you see online or some shit. Let's go on Rotten Tomatoes and let's have a look. As you can see from the upcoming critics, they include Batman v Superman as a dissatisfying film and Eisenberg needs a new acting style, Batman v Superman a hot steaming heap of trash and Miss Diane Sanger, I think that's how you say your name, over here she blatantly writes really. Really? As in, really, is that all you're gonna put as your headliner? Whereas Ranya Mauchi says the Lego Batman movie has more believable special effects than this film. So, you're telling me this is more believable than this? Like, what? One's an animation and one is a live action superhero film. They are two entirely different things. Now let's look at some of the top critics, shall we? Now, as you can see, most of the top critics despise Batman v Superman just as the regular critics did. No kind words to be said, which again, entitled to your own opinion. Whereas some have reason and explanation as to why they hate the movie, but some of these top critics who should be approaching this professionally since it is their job and they get paid for it, give some of the most ridiculous reasons as to why they hate it. Some say a joyless slog, they cover about geeky property, and for some reason said, oh hey, it's not as bad as Bush v. Gore, but close which was actually pretty funny in a way, that made me laugh. Which I don't trust these film critics because they would hate one film and then turn around and like another. For example, here we have Peter Howell from the Toronto Star saying this about Batman v Superman, whereas he also reviewed a film called The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which is the very definition of overcrowdedness and sonic overkill and too many villains thrown in there, which is surprisingly ranked higher than Batman v Superman. And then he has this to say about it, a film that doesn't take itself too seriously. Come on now, you're you're literally breaking my neck here, critics. Now the second reason as to why I don't trust them at all is because some of these critics would watch a movie but never watch that same movie again as they have more movies to review like Paul Blart Mall Cop, which sadly is ranked higher than Batman v Superman. You see, because that's how some movies work. Some may hate it the first viewing but then would eventually love it as time moves on. That's just how films go. Believe it or not, some of the best films of all time received extremely negative reviews from critics when it was first released. For example, 2001 A Space Odyssey, which is considered one of the most influential and most revolutionary science fiction films ever made today. It actually received numerous amounts of negative feedback too. This movie was directed by Stanley Kubrick, which I can assume at the time his style wasn't fully understood since 2001 A Space Odyssey wasn't the only one of his films to receive hate as well. Another one also included The Shining, which was a Stephen King novel adaptation in which Stephen King himself hated the movie Believe It or Not. Yet today, 2001 A Space Odyssey is viewed as one of the most greatest and revolutionary films ever made and The Shining one of the most scary 
scariest and most beautifully directed films of all time. And I know what you're thinking, guys. Well, Ryan, you're comparing Stanley Kubrick films to Zack Snyder superhero films. They are nowhere near as good or can even come close to these masterpieces. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that these critics tend to look at certain films and don't even bother looking back at it later down the road, whereas these films that I have mentioned before, they did and they eventually love it. Those films grew over time unexpectedly, so I won't be surprised if later down the line, Batman v Superman is a more widely received film for both fans and critics alike. But mostly critics. Well, Ryan, what about Paul Blart Mall Cop 1 and 2? They should be widely received later down the line too. No, no, there is nothing to dissect about these films at all. I am fully aware that this video is called The Problem with Film Critics Today. Yeah, I covered some of the critics in the past. Reason why is because in reality, the same qualities of a critic back then easily translates to this generation we live in right now because they are taking notes from the ones they read about. Critics back then still have the same problems on their outlook of movies similar to the ones we read about today because a film may not be understood the first viewing which is understandable because that has happened to me a couple times too but the more times i view said movie and start to dissect the film for what it's intended to do it also changes my views on it and that's not just critics but it's fans all around in which i'll show you a comment on my man of steel review to prove my point mr joel clark has this to say i didn't like this movie at all when i first watched it but after viewing it again i love man of steel to pieces and i would definitely say it's the best super Superman movie since Richard Donner's Superman. Smiley face. Nice comment there, Mr. Clark. You see, Mr. Clark here watched this movie a couple times to really understand the movie, whereas the critics only view it once and never view it again and say it's garbage. It's, it's bullshit. Now, thirdly, before I close this video out, which kind of harkens back to my second argument in a way, is the mindset that critics come into a movie before giving their final review. Some critics that I have mentioned before that was viewed on Rotten Tomatoes and some I'm about to show you here on Metacritic are the ones that aren't really considered fans of the franchise. Fans, which includes my buddy Ram for the Ramster channel, is a die-hard DC fan and loves Batman v Superman to death. He will defend that and Man of Steel to the day he dies. And it's not because people view fans like Ramster as fanboys or, oh, because he's He's a fanboy, he's not accepting that this film is bad, which is actually not true whatsoever. What me and my buddy Ram actually discussed over Facebook is the depth and symbolism that Batman v Superman had that these critics failed to see, whereas us, the fans, see what it's trying to do. And maybe that was the intention as to why this film was made. It's because of the fans, not for the acceptance of critics or anybody else. Because in a couple interviews Zack Snyder has done, even he admits that he created this film for fans who are in love with the lore. Fans will willing to see the greatest gladiator match in the history of the world for the first time on the big screen where the critics are judging it as an overall film. Which again, I don't blame them because it's their job, they get paid for it, but ask yourself this, what outweighs the other? The fans who are deeply in love with comic book movies or the critics overlooking what this film is intended to do. And I'm not gonna lie, there are some really butthurt fans out there because they literally created a petition to fire Zack Snyder away from the Justice League, Warner Brothers and DC involvement, movie directing and the overall world. People really hate him right now. This is all based on opinion and in my opinion, I thought Zack Snyder did an excellent job bringing this world to life. But let's face it, there is no such thing as a perfect movie nor will there ever be one. One. I was able to find flaws in Batman v Superman which bugged me to the core, don't get me wrong, but did that ruin my entire movie going experience in finally seeing Batman and Superman on the same screen? No, it didn't. What critics sometimes do is that they find one little flaw and it ruins the entire experience for them, such as Diane Sanger over here who said really in her review. Like come on, that's not a reasonable argument there. Because overall, I love Batman v Superman as a superhero movie and a film itself, and I find it sad how some seem to forget the brilliant things about this film, and yet they chalk it up as one of the worst superhero movies ever made. I love it, and I don't give a fuck if you say, oh, you're just a fanboy and you don't know anything about cinema, in which I'm not intended to do here on this video. I don't give a fuck. I'm just sick and tired that I live in a world where Batman v Superman is ranked closely to Fifty Shades of Grey on Rotten Tomatoes, which is absolute Bullshit. But those are my thoughts about critics, and I want to know what your guys's are. And believe me, I read comment sections, so I know every bit of opinion you have. So whatever your thoughts are, leave them down below. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all that social media shit down below. Keep in contact with me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And as always, may the force be with you. <laughs>